let's discuss phase reading the insomnia. Insomnia is the inability to sleep normally, resulting in an unrefreshed state of mind during the day, unresponsiveness, and fatigue, which seriously affects one's daily life, work, and study. Insomnia is manifested as difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, and unsatisfying sleep accompanied by symptoms such as fatigue, memory deterior deterioration, slow response, difficulty concentrating, and headaches. And TCM holds that the heart is, an, is in charge of the mind. Sleep problems belong in the jurisdiction of the heart. When you experience a deficiency of qi and blood, your heart is not nourished properly, leading to low spirit, stagnation of liver qi, and disorders of gastrointestinal function, all of which can cause obstruction of qi flow which disturb the mind and leads to insomnia. Face reading, when the blood vessels in the outer canti of the eyes are curved and the color grows darker, it is a sign of insomnia and dreaminess. For young people, the skin under the eyelids turning bluish black is a sign of insomnia and dreaminess. So as illustrated in the picture, the blood vessels in the outer canti of the eyes and the skin under the eyelids turns bluish black. Therapeutic methods develop healthy habits, go to bed at a fixed time and avoid strong tea, coffee, and other stimulating beverages before bedtime. Maintain a light diet that is rich in protein and vitamins. Nigwa point. Massage. First, use your thumb to massage the body 2.50 times clockwise and 50 times counterclockwise. Then press the knee one point with the tip of your thumb for three minutes. Finally, knee press the Xiao Chung point with the tip of your thumb for one minute. This ma massage has the effect of replenishing and calming the heart and tranquilizing the mind to effectively alleviate the symptoms of insomnia. Do this every day before going to bed. So as illustrated, the PC6 and heart 9. Thank you for your attention. Interviewing premenstrual symptoms. The most common cause of premenstrual tension is liver chi stagnation, which manifests with irritability, depression, and tendency to crying. These emotional states are often accompanied by abdominal or press distension. However, many other patterns may cause premenstrual tension. Liver fire and or heart fire may cause premenstrual tension manifesting with propensity to outbursts of anger, irritability, and agitation. Phlegm fire also may cause premenstrual tension manifesting with similar symptoms as well as mental confusion. With phlegm fire, there is also premenstrual breast swelling and pain. Premenstrual tension may be caused by deficiency conditions and primarily liver blood deficiency, liver and kidney yang deficiency, spleen and kidney yang deficiency, and spleen chi deficiency with dampness. In deficiency conditions, premenstrual tension manifests primarily with depression, crying, lack of motivation, and only a mild irritability. Premenstrual tension is not always due to liver chi stagnation. Nausea or vomiting before the period denotes stagnant liver chi invading the stomach, and premenstrual constipation indicates stagnant liver chi invading the intestines and spleen. Headaches before the period indicate liver chi stagnation or liver yang rising. Distension of the breasts denotes liver chi stagnation, but if the breasts become very swollen and painful, it may denote phlegm, which in premenstrual problems usually combines with chi stagnation. Acute breast pain may be due to toxic heat in the breast, such as happens in acute mastitis after childbirth. Retention of water with edema before the period indicates spleen yang and or kidney yang deficiency. It is always important to ask whether there is a change in bowel movements around period time because such changes reflect the state of the yang organs in a woman. Loose stools or constipation are frequent symptoms appearing at period time. 
constipation at period time may be due to stagnant liver chi invading the intestines, liver blood deficiency, or kidney yang deficiency. Loose stools may be due to spleen chi deficiency, stagnant liver chi invading the spleen, or kidney yang deficiency. To summarize, irritability, depression, moodiness, propensity to outbursts of anger in patients, wiry pulse is liver chi stagnation. Propensity to outbursts of anger, irritability, mental restlessness, shouting, anxiety, insomnia would be liver and heart fire. Mental restlessness, anxiety, insomnia, dream disturbed sleep would indicate heart fire. Mental restlessness, anxiety, insomnia, hyperactivity, dream disturbed sleep, mental confusion would indicate phlegm fire harassing upwards. Weepiness, crying, depression, mild irritability would be liver blood deficiency with secondary liver chi stagnation. Weepiness, crying, depression, lack of motivation, insomnia, liver and kidney deficiency. Weepiness, crying, depression, lack of motivation, tiredness, lassitude, spleen and kidney yang deficiency. Weepiness, tiredness, lassitude, feeling of heaviness, swollen breasts, Spleen, spleen chi deficiency with dampness and secondary liver chi stagnation. Nausea, vomiting, liver chi invading the stomach. Constipation with beaty stools and abdominal distension is liver chi invading the intestines. Constipation with dry stools, liver blood deficiency. Constipation with infrequent bowel movement, kidney yang deficiency. Loose stools, spleen chi deficiency. Loose stools with abdominal distension, stagnant liver chi invading the spleen, diarrhea, kidney yang deficiency, headaches, liver yang rising, or liver chi stagnation, breast distension, liver chi stagnation, and or phlegm, breast pain, severe liver chi stagnation, or toxic heat, edema, spleen, and kidney yang deficiency. Thank you for your attention. Let's now talk about hand yang ning large intestine meridian with the acupuncture point chang yang or the merchant yang. This is li1. Li1 or chang yang is the metal point, the horary point, and the jingle point of the large intestine meridian. The large intestine is the official in charge of the drainage of the dregs. It is responsible for receiving digestive waste, absorbing beneficial fluid from it thereby transforming it further and then eliminating what cannot be made use of and has no value to us. The condensing and downward movement of the large intestine echoes that of the lung function of descending the lung, of descending the chi. The large intestine is the yang partner of the lung official. Their roles seem completely opposite, but each official complements the other. Each is connected to the rhythm of life through the breath and to the work of the pole which deals with all the automated rhythmic processes of life. The pole resides in the lung in life and exits through the door of pole, the anus, after death to return to the earth. The metal element is concerned with first and last moments, entrances and exits, inspiration and elimination. The large intestine is the end of a cycle. It discards what is no longer useful so we can move on to our next experience. Without the elimination and cleansing properties of large intestine, there would be no room for the lung to inspire and expand fully. Large intestine distinguishes between what is of value to us, what will nourish us, and what will not. Shang Yang is a great point to reanimate and refresh body, mind, and spirit. The large intestine partners the stomach in Yang Ming. The Yang Ming is said to be rich in qi and blood, so, and so is frequently used to strengthen and nourish, as well as to clear heat. The enriching and revivifying of qi and blood can be helpful when the large intestine has become inert and toxic, contaminating perception and communication, the resulting sluggishness leading to feeling cold, physically and mentally dirty and dingy. This point can help clear energetic and emotional rubbish, enabling a more realistic appraisal of life. When someone is emotionally constipated, 
back up. They can be very awkward in accom and, and accommodating to others because there is no room for maneuver in their experience. Shang Nyang as a jingle point and the metal point will get the natural rhythm of life restarted. When we resist change, whether at the level of physical peristalsis or at a mental and spirit level, we engage in a futile resistance to life. The process of life necessitates many beginnings and endings. Large intestine, when out of balance, may continually look to the past if disappointed by the present. If the mental level is not regularly stimulated, rigidity and stubbornness can set in, believing there to be only one right way to do things. When depleted or disconnected from the vitality of life, metal can present an unchanging, severe, and cold front to the world. This point helps revitalize an inner large intestine. If someone's system is polluted, they can feel jaded and cynical, or at worst, toxic and paranoid. Large intestine imbalance can also show as being acquisitive, greedy, and selfish about possessions and emotional expression, afraid that letting something go will mean there will there is less for themselves. Merchant Yang can help regain a sense of perspective about the things of true value in life. In a state of health, the large intestine propagates the correct that is in harmony with the natural way of living because it goes to the process of life contributing to evolution and development. Merchant Yang is the metal point of the large intestine and will epitomize some aspects of the metal element. The need for a sustained connection with the heavenly chi to galvanize it, the quest for purity and value. As the rare point, it is commonly used with lung ache or the meridian gutter, particularly in autumn for invigorating and clearing out. As a qi well point, it clears lung heat and wind heat. It invigorates the channel, moving stagnant qi, removing obstructions. It clears and calms the mind, particularly in conjunction with stomach 45 in the yangming relationship. It also regulates the large intestine channel. This point is indicated for inertia, rigidity of mind and spirit, and contaminated perspective. It is also for acute sore throat, fevers with no sweating, for acute conditions involving wind heat, inferior wind, and wind stroke. It is for pain and numbness in the fingers, for shoulder pain, for toothache along the LI channel. It is also for wind heat affecting the eye. As the metal and orary point, merchant Yang can revitalize the LI of the shell. Consider this point if the patient is physically cold, emotionally inert, stubborn, or cynical. It is helpful when they can't communicate, can see the quality of their existence clearly, or are clogged up with rubbish. This is often used with lung aid, as in the metal and orary points, to clear out or detoxify the system physically and mentally, particularly effective when used in autumn. It is also useful for problems in the shoulders, fingers, arm, or neck, such as frozen joints. When used with LI-20, it can clear nasal congestion. Both lung and large intestine are connected with, life, with life's rhythms and attributes of the pole. Shang, in its name, is the musical note resonant with metal, as in lung 11 and C5. Consider this point for dental pain along the LI meridian. Thank you for your attention. Differential diagnosis for paralysis and weakness. Western differentiation. Paralysis and weakness stemming from paralytic poliomyelitis. This will include fever, headache, stiff neck, weakness of the back, usually one-sided. Paralysis, abnormal sensations, sensitivity to touch, difficult urination, constipation, abdominal distension, difficulty swallowing, muscle contraction, spasm, particularly in the cough, neck, or back, drooling, difficulty breathing, irritability. Paralysis and weakness stemming from myasthenia gravis, 
weakness or paralysis with visual disturbances, eyelid drooping, difficulty swallowing, gagging, choking, muscles function better after rest, drooping head, difficulty climbing stairs, difficulty talking, difficulty chewing, possible respiratory paralysis. Stemming from motor neuron disease, muscle wasting, muscle weakness, fasciculations. These are involuntary contractions of parts of muscle just below the skin. Swallowing and speech difficulties, muscle cramps. Symptoms of motor neuron disease are progressive. Stemming from multiple sclerosis, weakness and or paralysis of extremities, muscle tremors, muscle spasticity, muscle spasms, poor coordination, numbness, tingling, visual disturbances, dizziness, vertigo, frequent urgent urination, incontinence, decreased memory, judgment and spontaneity, loss of ability to think abstractly, slurred speech, decreased attention span, depression, fatigue, disease typically pursues relapsing and remitting course in early years. Stemming from muscular dystrophy, muscle weakness, which is progressive, frequent falls, delayed development of muscle motor skills, difficulty walking, difficulty using one or more muscle groups, drooping eyelids, drooling, low muscle tone, joint contractures, scoliosis. Now let's go to Chinese differentiation of paralysis and weakness. Diagnosis questioning according to etiology. Invasion, external dampness, this is exposure to damp weather, living conditions, especially during menstruation after childbirth. Dietary factors, dampness from greasy, fried, cold, dairy, raw, sweet foods, excessive sexual activity, physical overwork. There would be dizziness, blurred vision, urinary difficulty or urgency, shock, heart, spleen chi deficiency. According to stages, stage one, remission, stage two would be channel problems, excess condition, stage three, middle burner involvement, combined excess deficiency, stage four, stage three plus kidney deficiency, weakness, tiredness, emaciation, Way syndrome. Differentiation between damp phlegm and damp heat, heaviness, numbness, tingling limbs, aching shoulders and back, greasy white tongue coating, slippery, thin or empty pulse, damp phlegm. Numbness, swelling, and heat of joints, sometimes painful joints, low-grade fever, greasy yellow tongue coating, rapid slippery pulse, thump heat. Important acupuncture points, local points on affected limbs, wanto jaji points, girdle vessel for dampness, governing vessel for kidneys and spine, yin heel vessel for stiff, tight lateral leg muscles, yang heel vessel for tight medial leg muscles, scalp needing motor areas. Zanfu patterns, stage two, invasion of damp phlegm and invasion of damp heat. Stage three, spleen chi deficiency with damp obstruction, liver blood deficiency, yin fire. And stage four, kidney yin or yang deficiency. Thank you for your attention. Let us now go to qi transformation. The topic is influence of heart and kidney and san jiao qi. The heart is located in the upper jiao. It houses the mind and its nature pertains to the fire element. The kidney is located in the lower jiao. It stores essence and its nature pertains to the water element. The polarity of the heart and the kidney is the fundamental polarity between fire and water. Physiologically, heart fire descends into the kidney and together with kidney yang warms kidney water to prevent it from becoming cold. Kidney water rises to the heart and together with heart yin, moistens heart fire to prevent it from hyperactivity. The relationship between the descent of heart fire and the ascent of kidney water must maintain the same balance as that seen between water and fire, between yin and yang, and between above and below. In CM, this is known as the harmony between the heart and the kidney, or mutual support of water and fire. What is the mechanism underlying the balanced relationship between the heart and the kidney? The heart pertains to fire, but there is water within fire. The kidney pertains to water, but there is fire within water. When water fails to ascend, it is due to deficient kidney yang being unable to raise water. 
When fire fails to descend, it is due to deficient heart yin being unable to lower fire. Consequently, there appears to be a disharmony between the heart and the kidney or discordance between water and fire. The development of disharmony between the heart and the kidney is usually due to kidney yin not being able to augment heart yin. If heart yin is unable to restrain heart yang, then heart fire may blaze causing insomnia, agitation, and impatience. The harmonious interaction between the heart and the kidney is pivotal to qi's ascent and descent, since the heart and the kidney directly affect the actions of qi and other zhang organs. On the one hand, the kidney and liver share a common source. If kidney yin cannot nourish liver yin, liver yang will rise and become hyperactive, giving rise to headache, impatience, and irascibility. On the other hand, the heart and the lung are both located in the upper jiao. Deficiency of heart qi can impair the lung's functions of dispersion and depuration and cause lung qi to become stagnant in the chest. This can give rise to tightness in the chest, coughing, and labored breathing. The normal functioning of the spleen and the stomach is also dependent upon the balance between ascent and descent of heart qi and kidney qi. The heart and the kidney provide fire and water, which constitute the foundation for the stomach's ability to receive and absorb and for the spleen's ability to transform and transport the essence of drink and food. The sand jiao is one of the fu viscera. At the same time, it encompasses all the internal organs. Its basic function is to ensure all the passages remain open, so that qi can flow without impedance and water metabolism can proceed smoothly and waste can be excreted properly. The san zhao can facilitate the flow of genuine qi, thereby providing the motive force for qi throughout the body and for all the processes of metabolism. Hence, the classic on medical problem states, the san zhao is ambassador of genuine qi. It controls the circulation of the three kinds of qi and distributes them to the five zhang and the six fu viscera. The san zhao is the highway for the circulation of water fluids. The plain question states, the san zhao is the official in charge of dredging. From its action, the waterways are cleared. This explains that its main function is to enable the entire process of qi transformation of the body's fluids and to ensure free passage through the waterways. If this function is impaired, qi stagnates and so does water, resulting in edema and ascites. Every part of the san zhao has its own functions, particularly concerning qi movement. In summary, the san zhao controls the correct movement of every type of qi and in this way ensures its proper actions. As Hua Tuo points out in the classic of the secret transmission, if the San Zhao is patent, then all the pathways are patent in the interior, in the exterior, on the left, on the right, above and below. In the task of irrigating the entire body, harmonizing the interior, regulating the exterior, nourishing the left and the right, and dispersing and conducting the upper and the lower, there is nothing more important than this. Thank you so much for your attention. Let's now proceed to diagnosis according to Zhang for organ patterns with the pattern liver and gallbladder damp teeth. When there is damp heat in the liver and gallbladder, there will be symptoms and signs of both damp heat in the liver and gallbladder damp heat. Physiology can be traced to the consumption of food and medicine that create dampness or are hot in their energy. Emotional imbalances that weaken the spleen, such as worry and pensiveness, or emotions such as frustration, pent up anger, and irritation that stagnate liver chi, thereby generating heat in the liver. There can also be direct invasions of exogenous damp heat, especially in tropical climates. The symptoms and signs fever or aversion to heat. Blocked or stuffy sensation in the chest and below the ribs, sensation of heaviness and fatigue in the body, yellow skin color and yellowish sclera, red and weeping skin disorders, rashes and sores, itching, burning or stinging skin, sores or rashes, genital ulcers or ulcers around the mouth, copious yellowish sticky discharge from the vagina that is odorous, swollen or red and painful genitals, irregular menstrual cycle or spotting, yellow sticky sweat, bitter or sticky taste in the mouth, dark and sparse urine, the urine may be odorous, burning sensation on urination, 
lack of appetite, nausea, or vomiting, especially after consuming greasy food, and headache. There will also be constipation or sticky stools that may be clay-colored, irritability, and anger, thirst without a desire to drink, red tongue with even redder sides, greasy yellowish coating, possibly only on one side or two bilateral yellow stripes. Fast, slippery, and or wiry pulse, and a wiry pulse on the left guan position. The key symptoms here, sensation of heaviness and fatigue, bitter or sticky taste, nausea, yellow skin, dark urine, and yellow greasy tongue coating. Treatment principle, we drain damp sheets from the liver and gall bladder. The acupuncture points to choose from are liver 2, liver 14, bladder 18, bladder 19, gall bladder 24, gall bladder 34, gall bladder 41, Sanjo 5, Danang She, LI 11, Spin 6, and Do 9. The needle technique is draining. To explain the choice of points, liver 2, liver 14, GB 24, GB 34, bladder 18, bladder 19, and do 9, drain damp sheet from the liver and gallbladder. Gallbladder 41 and Sancho 5, together open daimai and drain damp sheet. Spin 6 and spleen 9, drain dampness. LI 11 drains the damp sheet. Danang She is an empirical point for the treatment of gallbladder disorders. When there is damp sheet in the liver and gallbladder, the patient should avoid consuming substances that create heat or dampness, especially if these substances have an affinity with the liver. Alcohols, hot spices, fried food, and too much red meat should particularly be avoided, as well as foods such as dairy products, sugar, sweets, nuts, bananas, and avocados. A liver that is burdened with pharmaceutical medicine, alcohol, chemical, heavy metals, and other pollutants will have difficulty carrying out its metabolic functions, so caution should be exercised and the consumption of all kinds of medicine, including dietary supplements or, and herbal remedies, should be limited as much as possible. Stress and pain of emotions, especially anger and frustration, can create heat in the liver. A person with damp heat in the liver and gallbladder should try and address these emotional issues. Exercise, sports, and physical training will be beneficial as physical activity will help to circulate and spread stagnant liver chi, which often involves in the creation of heat in the liver. Liver and gallbladder damp heat can be caused by spleen chi deficiency, damp heat, liver chi stagnation heat, invasion of exogenous pathogenic chi, gallbladder damp cold, and in turn this can result in liver fire, phlegm, and liver blood stagnation. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss the diagnostic approach in Chinese medicine, the principles of diagnosis. First, the approaching patients holistically. The holistic approach to the patient has two meanings. In one meaning, the human body is taken as an organic whole so that pathological changes in one region of the Logical changes of the whole body may be reflected in the local area. An illness in the exterior of the body can transmit into the interior. The illness of the visceral organs can be reflected in the exterior. For example, dryness of the eyes is usually due to deficiency of liver yin or liver blood and inflamed eyes indicate heat in the liver meridian or strong heat in the lungs. If one sees only the local symptoms without regard to the analysis of the overall condition of the entire body, then it is difficult to arrive at a correct diagnosis. In its other meaning, the holistic approach emphasizes the mutual relationship between human body and its natural surroundings. Humans live in the natural environment and are affected at all times by weather and other influences. When there are unusual changes in the environment and the body fails to adapt functionally to these changes and then illness may result. Hence, in order to make an accurate diagnosis, the physician must observe the patient's environment and incorporate this observation when analyzing the patient's symptoms. Number two, comprehensive analysis of all symptoms. Each of the four methods of diagnosis 
history, inspection, auscultation, and all action, and palpation collects clinical information and provides a unique approach to an understanding of the illness and none can be replaced by another. To arrive at an objective and reliable diagnosis of all four must be employed in concert. Thus, clinical information on the development of the present illness, the evolution of the symptoms, past illness, illnesses of the patient and of the family members can be obtained only by taking the history, the physical condition and vitality, the complexion and the behavior, behavior of the patient can be obtained only by inspection. The quality of the voice and the emanating odors can be assessed only by auscultation and olfaction. The pulse, which reflects the state of patient's illness, can be obtained only by palpation. Moreover, the occasion on illness may show false symptoms. On such occasion, the concerted application of these methods is especially important. Number three, diagnosis by symptom analysis and differential diagnosis. This means that in approaching a patient, the physician must determine the type of illness, then on the basis of the pattern of symptoms, the illness affecting the patient. Identification of the illness can convey much information on the entire course of the pathological changes, whereas the pattern of symptoms reflect the situation at a particular point of time. Determining the pattern of symptoms without ascertaining the diagnosis cannot lead to a firm grasp of the entire course of the illness and the mechanism of pathological changes. On the other hand, making illness diagnosis without differential differentiating the pattern cannot make rational treatment possible. In general, the symptoms analysis should precede differential diagnosis. For example, if a patient shows such symptoms as polydipsia, excessive thirst, polypagia, excessive eating, polyuria, excessive urine, and emaciation, then by applying symptom analysis by the physician, can recognize and determine that the pattern of symptoms is one of diabetes. Then from the relative significance of these findings, the changes in the tongue and the pulse and the physical constitution and the condition of the patient can be further determined whether the illness is due to heat in the lung damaging fluids, blazing heat in the stomach, deficiency of kidney yin, or deficiency of both yin and yang. Once a clear diagnosis has been obtained, treatment can proceed accordingly. Thus, Chinese medicine treats every patient with an individualized protocol rather than using a common protocol for patients who suffer from the same illness. Thank you for your attention. Let us now go to epigastric pain. The topic is cold invading the stomach. The clinical manifestations of cold invading the stomach is acute with severe epigastric pain with sudden onset, with chilliness and desire for application of warmth on the stomach area. There will be no thirst but desire for warm drinks, and pain is not alleviated by pressure, and there will be nausea and vomiting. The tongue will have a thick white coating and the pulse will be full and tight. This is an acute condition that occurs when external cold invades the stomach directly without going through the skin and muscles first. Such direct invasion of cold can only affect stomach, intestines, or uterus. Cold contracts and this causes intense pain. It also prevents stomach chi from descending, which causes nausea and vomiting. The other symptoms, such as no thirst, desire for warm drinks, and improvement with application of warmth, are obvious cold symptoms. This pattern occurs only as an acute condition. The treatment principle is to scatter cold, warm the stomach, and stop the pain. The points to be used are stomach 21, stomach 34, spleen 4, and ren 13. Using the reducing method and moxa must be used. The application of the moxa box on the epigastrium while the needles on stomach 21 are retained is particularly beneficial. The explanation for the points used is that stomach 21 is used for excess patterns of the stomach, while stomach 34 as accumulation point stops pain. Spleen 4 removes obstructions from epigastrium and stops pain, and REN 13 is used if there is nausea or vomiting. 
For dietary advice and invasions of external cold to the stomach, it is best to avoid cold foods such as salads and fruit and most of all, iced drinks. Thank you so much for your attention.